fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. The constitutional point of view was critical for Jefferson's support of the Bill of Rights. Is time running out? It's Saturday. Welcome to the Hayden Collins Radio Program, the Intelligence Syndicate. And I, I know my voice is a little off this week. <laughs> we had fun. Oh, did we have fun. And while we were out having fun, the craziness of the political scheme changed a little bit. Uh, some people didn't have so much fun last week. It was incredible the amount of incompetence that surfaced last week. And I'll tell you the truth, when I got to my notes, now keep in mind, you guys know how the show is developed. I mean, I'll, I do not tune in to the daily news. That's not my speed because there's no sense in us repeating what they're saying. Okay, so you wouldn't listen to the show if we did. All we're doing is another echo chamber. So we don't do that. You know, we talk about other issues and other things. So... Notes that were thrown to me, the interns throw some notes to me, and we, we found some out-of-the-way things that are really going to dampen the spirits of a lot of individuals inside the United States. Hong Kong, the British, oh my gosh, how do I even start this? Okay, so Hong Kong was under British rule for a while. And part of the agreement was they were to turn it back over to China at a set point in time and yada, yada, yada. And there was a peaceful exchange and they turned it back over to China. And here we are a few years later and things aren't going so well. Apparently, uh, once people get a taste of freedom or, you know, once people get a taste of no communism, it's kind of hard for them to to lose that flavor, to, to lose that, that yearning. And, and China, of course, cracking down on Hong Kong, trying to make it like the rest of China. And, and Hong Kong's going, this sucks. <laughs> In fact, not only does it suck, it sucks bad. This communism thing really bites. We're working hard and we're taking all of our money and giving it to somebody else. We earn this money. It's our money. And you're giving it all to somebody else. <laughs> you know, there's a lesson there for a bunch of socialists inside the United States. However, they're not smart enough to listen to it, so we'll leave it at that. But the most, I would say, the most heartwarming thing, and I, and I do mean heartwarming thing, is during the protests that they're holding in Hong Kong, they're singing our national anthem. They're calling out for help. Hey, United States, help us. You know, we're singing an anthem to you. We're not singing the Chinese national anthem. We're not singing hail to communism. We desire freedom. We desire the opportunity to live and, and pursue our own happiness. Not the happiness of the communist government. And so they're singing our national anthem. That, I, I don't even know how to explain that. You are in communist China where you don't have freedom of speech and you're protesting singing the American national anthem while China's in a trade war with the United States. I don't think the people of the United States understand how these individuals in Hong Kong are risking their lives by singing a song and yearning for freedom. And it's not in the political landscape of the United States to talk about it right now because we've got 
politics going on and so on and so forth, but it might become a political issue. I mean, China already is a political issue in regards to trade. But now China's becoming a, an issue, and, I, and I've said this before on the show, I said, chi China's got a cancer it can't cure. It's got capitalism going on inside of communism, and capitalism is winning out over communism. And as this continues to happen, they keep arresting millionaires thinking that they're solving the problem. And they don't understand the hunger that has developed just like it did in Russia. And you can arrest all the millionaires you want. They're going to keep popping up. This capitalism thing, it, it grows, it catches, it creates competition, it creates success. And it, they can't stifle it. They can't do it. Now, I, I say that if they were to start mass murdering people, they could probably kill it. If they were to go into Hong Kong and just start wiping people out, they could probably kill it. And there wouldn't be anything anybody in the world could do about it. That's how brave these people are in Hong Kong. They're risking life, limb, and future, everything. And they're trying to acquire freedom inside a communist government. Now, I'll let you know right now, it's not just in Hong Kong. Things are kind of catchy elsewhere in China as well. There, um, there's an undertow, if you will. And it's not as if the communist government has lost control, but financially, they don't have the pull that they used to have, no matter how many rules they create. No matter how many conditions they create, the condition of the people and their wants and needs are exceeding the government's ability to provide. And I'm not talking about services. I'm talking about the confidence in the government and freedom. There, there are some serious things to watch here. We may see this in our lifetime because here's how the spectrum plays out. North Korea is becoming US friendly. In fact, I tell you what, there's gonna be some business opportunities there. If Kim plays his cards right, we end this Korean War thing, he will become the hero of that entire peninsula. And he will be remembered throughout history for bringing an end to this conflict where his father and of course that Korean, all the people that died and everything else, that he actually changed the condition and that he actually changed things inside his country for the better and brought them into the new age. That's what he may be remembered for. Now, if he doesn't do it, he's just going to be remembered. Okay, he was a dictator and yeah, he killed a lot of people. And instead of freeing a lot of people and changing the future, this is like the founding fathers thing. You know, you got a lot of nut jobs out there. Oh, they own slaves. I said, I don't see that in the Constitution. You know, where, where was that written in the Constitution? Where is any of that stuff written in the Constitution? These guys knew what was wrong and they changed it. They were changing it for the future. They knew what was wrong. They were correcting it. <laughs> what you ought to think about is what happens if they didn't correct it? Where would you be now? What happens if they weren't brave enough to stand up and do things like that? Where would you be now? That's exactly what's going on in Hong Kong. If I live through the next 40 years and see what happens to China, I have my suspicions that China is going to be a very different country. Hong Kong will become an economic leader again. It'll be a, it'll be a condition to watch. Anyway, that, that one hit the highlight of my notes. That, that was top priority to investigate everything that was going on there and the provinces and how that was coming together. Number two, this whole... If you guys ever watched the movie Fight Club, yeah, it was... Who was that? The guy that was in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I forget his name. He, he was in that movie. But the Fight Club, the whole thing is, is you don't talk about Fight Club. If you talk about Fight Club, you know, we're kind of come and kill you and things like that, right? And, you know, there's a whole movie about it. It's kind of, kind of neat, but, you know, it's Fight Club. If you take that premise and apply it to what's going on with Jeffrey Boy, who apparently committed suicide by strangling himself, under suicide watch in a federal penitentiary, we have what's called sex club. You don't talk about sex club because if you talk about sex club, we'll kill you, but everybody's in the sex club. 
And you got to be a part of the sex club, but don't talk about sex club. And all these names that are involved in it in sex club, of course, they're logged in. They can't run away from it in sex club. We're going to see a lot of mass suicides because they're going to be talking about sex club. They're involved in sex club. Some of them are even moving assets right now <laughs> out of the country. <laughs> Imagine that. Because Jeffrey Boy, you know, strangled himself to death in a federal penitentiary um, to commit suicide. That's like the guy that shot himself in the back four times who was going to testify against the Clintons. <laughs> Maybe he was part of Sex Club. But here's the gist of the whole thing. When this kind of corruption, when it surfaces and people are held to task for it, there may be a condition that will stop this from coming forward and, and stop this from going anywhere. Because if it involves so many people in government that it undermines the credibility of government and the American people, they'll brush this under the rug. That this kind of control will continue because it's too big. It will destroy the confidence. It will destroy the well-being of the nation. So if nothing's done about it, you'll know how big it is. If nothing's done about it, you'll know how much control it has. And the devastating thing is, these kids that are involved in this, that their lives are ruined because of this, they'll never be right. They'll never be right. And they become victims of the machine. It's strange, once you find the machine, you find the components of the machine and how it's funded. The machine destroys itself, so you can't find any more of it. It's compartmentalized. Don't talk about Fight Club. If you talk about Fight Club, and you're in Fight Club, we're going to kill you. Crazy movie. Strange how Hollywood... <laughs> Sometimes, if you just change the title... Hits the nail on the head with reality. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my gosh, Hollywood. Well, well done. Good job on that. All right, so school has started. And everybody's going back to school. And we have the new numbers from last year. We're actually looking at the numbers from last year. And I like talking about this. This is kind of the educational thing. This is, this is the mm, control study group, if you will for ongoing educational efforts and the trends in education and where it's going. So we got to look at all the numbers from last year. I, we actually got them the first of this month. Uh, we're looking at not only budget numbers, but uh, school cost numbers. But the most important thing was, was we're looking at students, student population, and the different realms of education they are receiving. Now this means a lot when it comes to funding. This means a lot when it comes to how schools are set up and put together and, and, and how they move forward. You know, how many students per classroom, how many teachers do they hire, so on and so forth. So the, I, I would say that it's less than a 3% change across the board. But here are the changes. Here's how interesting the changes are. The high school dual education program is growing. Vocational school is growing. That's the biggest growth. The vocational school program is the biggest growth. That that one is, um, that's the boom growth. And it's it's actually pretty good. Now, what you see a decline in numbers in, this was, this was kind of awkward, if you will, but there's a decline in college freshmen. Not necessarily per school, but I mean overall. There's a decline in college freshmen. And not a whole lot of people are talking about it. You know, there's this, <laughs> there's this boom in higher education. It looks like the bubble may bust. And this may be the second indicator. The first indicator was last year. This may be the second indicator. The high school enrollment appears to be normal based on last year, so that broke even. The homeschool enrollment... Now, you understand, I know I just said high school enrollment stays the same, but some of the high schools count dropouts. So they'll say, oh, they dropped out. And... The dropouts will go get their GED, or the dropouts will go get, uh, they'll go to homeschool, or they'll start schooling themselves. 
the homeschooling, and this was the biggest number, had, and it was 2.8%, has increased by 2.8%. Now, this is a steady increase from last year as well. And you go, oh my gosh, you know, what, what are they doing with homeschooling? You know what? The programs, some programs you still pay for, the, the heavily credible programs online you pay for, uh, you pay tuition for, there are doctorates involved, so on and so forth. The state programs where the state is trying to capture this. And this, this is where the state's in trouble. The states are trying to capture this, so they provide free online education for anybody who wants to sign up for homeschooling through the state. But there, there's criteria there, of course. I mean, there, there is. It's accreditation, yada, 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 so on and so forth. And the private homeschool groups uh, don't have the same criteria, but they still meet the needs and the educational programs for the student. This is becoming very attractive for a lot of people that don't want the headaches of the socialized school system. And I say socialized school system, it's the one size fits all. So school systems, let's take it on the public school system side, they're changing the way they do business. There are charter schools out there now that are competing with public schools. There are vision schools out there that are competing with public schools. And the public school systems themselves are changing the way they do business and changing the way they educate children because they realize they're losing an audience. They realize they're losing customers. And that's what this is. They're, they're in business to educate children. And they're losing customers. And this is bad for them. Very, very bad. Because they got to you know, collect taxes to keep those brick and mortar schools open. So the other side of this is the numbers that we're looking at. I open this up saying, hey, you know, we're looking at numbers for how much schools cost to keep open, which ones are closing, which ones are keeping open, and so on and so forth. And there's an actual decrease, huge decrease, in capital spending for building new schools. <laughs> That's what I just said. Building new schools. Now, the numbers have, with inflation, of course, what little there is, have stayed the same for re repairing the schools they currently have and doing general maintenance on those schools. But there's kind of, I, I don't want to say it's a construction hold, but there's not a whole lot going on with construction in new schools. And another indicator that this is kind of awkward for the public school systems would you believe they're, they're, it's called the school bus measurement? How many new school buses are purchased for a school system? Is a judgment of how active the school system is or how much, you know, they have to go pick up and deliver to games and, you know, whatever the case may be. Oh, this football team's getting sort of school buses used everywhere. The purchasing of school buses is dropped. And you're saying, okay, Hayden, a lot of parents are taking their kids to school. Yeah, but a lot of kids are going to vocational school now. And more than 3% increase, well, almost 3% increase of kids are now homeschooling. Well, the routes are the same, Hayden. Those buses still have to travel the same routes. Yeah, but they're not making as many stops. In fact, some routes may have been modified and routes may have been eliminated. And where a bus was full before now, it's halfway. So it was able to pick up more kids on a different route, which eliminated a bus. <laughs> All right, so here's the educational trend. And I'm sorry for my voice. I've already apologized more than once. I, I hear it cracking everywhere. Here's an educational trend. If the trend continues, will we see brick and mortar schools for K through 8 only? And high school will be limited. They'll have some high schools that are brick and mortar. But the growth in homeschooling at high school level um, may increase based on the fact that other than going there and you know and saying yay football team or yay basketball team or sporting event or something to that effect uh, the high schools are not providing the students what they need with this large growth in vocational programs hint one the reduction in college programs hint two and <laughs> the, the high schools not being able to compete with the private or charter school systems, hint three. So there may be a huge paradigm shift in education coming soon, and it may go either way. I, I, I think I see a hybrid where there's gonna be some public schools that are gonna be really good because A, they had to become really good or they wouldn't be around anymore. There'll be some public schools just because there's no other school around, so they'll have to have public schools. 
but this this charter school systems that are scoring better now uh, the private school systems that are scoring better now. And, and the charter schools don't put up with the behavioral issues. The charter schools just don't put up with that stuff. Your kid shows up, but he's messing up. They've got no time for it. They, they're there to educate. You got behavioral problems, you go solve them yourself. Now that's on you. And that's forcing parents to come forward and do their job a little bit more too. A lot of kids get read the riot act. So there's, there's gonna be trend shifts. There's gonna be changes in that educational platform as it moves forward. And we'll see how this plays out. I'm looking forward to going back to, I've got one of the K through 12 systems I'm looking at up in uh, Pennsylvania this summer, doing a reevaluation. And I'll be able to put hands on because more than half of the school district is charter schools. And as I'm looking at their scores, they're already scoring eight points on average higher than the public schools. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right, when we come back from the break. The twins are coming up with part two <laughs> from last week. And you're going to love the ending of this. I told him, I said, guys, I love the ending of this. So li listen to their podcast. You're going to, oops, I arted. And you're going to love the ending of this one as it's part two. Uh, we'll come back right after the break. Be about it.